How Thomas Markle's string of gaffes and sour comments mean Meghan's exiled father may never see the baby who will bring his daughter and her mother Doria closer than ever before. Behind the heartwarming announcement that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are expecting their first child, there lies an altogether less straightforward subplot. It is the story of two very different maternal grandparents. Meghan's mother, Doria Ragland, will be filled with joy and excitement as she anticipates the spring arrival of her first grandchild, and will expect to play a very active role in raising the child. Indeed, though she has reportedly decided against moving permanently from Los Angeles to London, at least for the time being, sources say she plans to make regular transatlantic trips to visit her new family. Contrast Miss Ragland's jubilation with the emotions of Meghan's 74-year-old father, Thomas, as he ponders the momentous news at his lonely apartment in the Mexican resort of Rosarito Beach. Though he already has five grandchildren by his son, Thomas Jr., and daughter, Samantha Grant, the product of his first marriage, Mr. Markle ought to be feeling similarly thrilled, for Meghan was always the apple of his eye, and his only child with Doria. Yet thanks to his unedifying words and behavior towards her and Prince Harry these past few months, he has alienated himself from them so completely that, according to insiders, Meghan didn't even deign to call him to tell him she was to become a mother. Instead, it was left to Doria to inform him of the pregnancy. He has now pronounced himself overjoyed by the news, and is said to have written a congratulatory letter to the couple. However, the tragic truth is that, unless there is a thawing of polar ice cap proportions in his relationship with Meghan, Mr. Markle is unlikely ever to see his sixth grandchild. As I discovered when researching Meghan's family background, Mr. Markle's vainglorious pride and mulish stubbornness are commensurate with his six feet three in, twenty stone stature. According to those who know him, he is therefore highly unlikely to eat humble pie by apologizing to Meghan, for the word sorry is not in his lexicon. Yet today, how he must regret lining his pockets by stunting up those grubby, pre-wedding paparazzi photographs, then failing to walk his daughter down the aisle after supposedly suffering a suspiciously timed heart attack. Even then, Meghan, to her credit, was openly supportive of her father, issuing a statement saying she hoped he can be given the support he needs to focus on his health. Clearly, she hoped he would come to realize his behavior had to change in accordance with her status. With insouciance, however, Mr. Markle repaid her loyalty by selling her out again, via a string of combustible interviews. When speaking, without her permission, to Piers Morgan on ITV's breakfast show, Good Morning, he committed the cardinal sin of revealing Harry's political views, saying the prince thought Donald Trump ought to be given a chance, and that he was open to the experiment of Brexit. Then he compounded his faux pas by discussing, far too prematurely, the prospect of Meghan becoming a mother. In language dredged up from his blue-collar Pennsylvanian roots, he remarked that there has got to be a child in the making, somewhere soon. Stung by the frosty reaction to his TV appearance, and by now stuck in a gigantic hole of his own making, his reaction was to keep on digging. Meghan would be nothing without him, he declared in a self-pitying follow-up interview. I made her the duchess she is today. Everything Meghan is, I made her. Revealing that he had been totally ostracized by the royal family, he added, perhaps it would be easier for Meghan if I died. He also claimed that when Harry phoned him, after his heart attack, the prince had been so rude to him for committing his various indiscretions that he had put the phone down on his son-in-law. The final straw came last week, when an American tabloid revealed that Mr. Markle had admitted to snorting cocaine as a younger man. From that point, there really was no way back. For this grandfather there will be no rough and tumble games, no sleepover parties or long country walks, no trips to the park for rides on the swings and games of softball or soccer. Given his fascinating ancestry, and the many TV and movie stars he worked with during his years as a Hollywood lighting director, Mr. Markle must have a treasure trove of real-life bedtime stories in his memory bank. Now they might never be told. He is an accomplished amateur photographer, and would surely have relished passing his skills down to his grandchild, as he once did with Meghan, but that is unlikely to happen. And yet, remembering the closeness that once existed between father and daughter, it should never have been like this. By all accounts, Mr. Markle was not an attentive father to Samantha and Thomas Jr., 
who is also estranged from him, ironically by dint of his own tawdry attempts to cash in on Meghan's ascent to the royal family. His relations with their children are said to be cordial but distant. However, he doted on Meghan, whom he called his little buckaroo dash from the day she was born, devoting an enormous amount of time to her upbringing. Her parents divorced when she was seven, sharing custody, but during her teens, when her mother often worked away, she lived mainly with her father. Two years ago, she acknowledged her enormous affection for him with an Internet Father's Day message. Accompanied by a picture of her father holding her as a baby, she wrote, I'm still your buckaroo and to this day our hugs are still the best in the whole wide world. Thanks for my work ethic, my love of Busby Berkeley films and club sandwiches, for teaching me the importance of handwritten thank you notes, and for giving me the Markle signature nose. I love you. Much has changed since she penned the touching message. yesterday. A friend of Mr. Markle told the Mail that, in his letter of congratulation concerning the pregnancy, he had told Meghan she would make a great mother because, despite their recent difficulties he believed she remained a very loving and compassionate woman. He thinks she will be naturally maternal, the source added. He said he had been remembering when Doria found out she was pregnant with Meg, and how emotional he felt. He only hopes he can share some of the joy. There is a long way back, but maybe. Just maybe, this statement, delivered through a friend, was Mr. Markle's way of apologizing, his first, tentative attempt at affecting a rapprochement. So what, then, of the expectant grandmother, the woman whose dignified demeanor and understatedly stylish appearance at the wedding won universal admiration, and whose impeccable discretion could not be further removed from that of her ex-husband? In a typically low-key statement, issued notably through Kensington Palace yesterday, Miss Ragland said she was very happy about this lovely news and looks forward to welcoming her first grandchild. These carefully chosen words can't conceal her utter elation, however. When Meghan was a girl, her mother taught her to become an accomplished cook. The Duchess still prepares the wholesome Mexican and Italian dishes they made together, ensured she completed her homework, and, later, advised her on how to handle the attention of boys. Though Meghan enjoyed a good education, first at an exclusive private kindergarten in Hollywood and later at a top Roman Catholic girls' school, and mingled with famous actors through her father's work, Miss Ragland was also eager for her to experience the harsher side of life, and would take her on trips to Jamaica to show her how the less privileged lived. Meghan, whom she nicknamed Flower, credits her with instilling in her the social conscience that now inspires her humanitarian work. Doubtless Miss Ragland will hope that she can do the same for her daughter's child. More immediately, however, she will aim to be of practical help to Megan. Last month, she was spotted taking baby care classes in Pasadena, California, prompting speculation, not only that Megan was pregnant, but that she was against her daughter following the traditional royal path by entrusting much of her child's day-to-day -day care to a nanny. Miss Ragland, who already specializes in teaching prenatal yoga, took lessons in breastfeeding, childbirth, newborn baby care, and first aid at the Cradle Company, an LA-based parenting clinic. Rumors about a royal pregnancy gathered pace when it emerged she had given up her full-time job as a social worker in Los Angeles in May. However, Senior royal aides insist this interpretation is incorrect. She has her own life in L.A., with her dogs. And it will continue that way, said one. Perhaps so, but a daughter's reliance on her mother's support is never greater than when she has her first baby, and Miss Ragland will certainly play an important role. Whether the child will one day forge a close relationship with its exiled grandfather remains to be seen. Health issues facing a geriatric mother aged 37. It can cause a baby to grow much larger, which raises the risk of a challenging delivery. It can also increase the chances of high blood pressure. Women over 30 are also more than twice as likely to suffer from high blood pressure, known as hypertensive disease of pregnancy. The incidence of preeclampsia, very high blood pressure that can put both mother and baby in danger, is doubled, to about 10 percent, in women over 40 as compared with those 10 years younger. To avoid complications in over 35s an increasing number of hospitals are inducing the baby. However, obstetrician Dr. Peter Bowen Simpkin, 
says induction can result in a long and exhausting labor and result in the baby getting into distress. The danger of miscarriage is also greater in older women. A further issue is the increased risk of Down syndrome. According to the NHS, a 30-year-old woman has a 1 in 800 chance of having a Down's baby. This climbs to 1 in 270 over the age of 35. However, there is no reason why the majority of older women shouldn't have a healthy pregnancy as long as they are carefully monitored and look after themselves, says Dr. Byram. At 37, Meghan will be one of the oldest, first-time royal mothers. She's part of a growing trend for women to leave motherhood late. Indeed, mums to be over the age of 35 are called geriatric by doctors. The numbers over 40 having babies have now overtaken the under 20s for the first time in almost 70 years. There are certain medical risks associated with older women says Dr. Jenny Byram, consultant at Birmingham's Women and Children's Hospital. One of them is gestational diabetes, a form of diabetes that only occurs in pregnancy, with the risk in older mothers three to six times greater.